Thanks, baby. How I love you so. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Guess what? Guess what? Today is 2.22.22 at 2.22 Eastern Standard Time on a Tuesday. Uh, it's really the only reason that we're going live right now because what a great date and time to go live. I am going to have a purpose. However, uh, I was supposed to have Antonio from Antonio TV come in today. He couldn't make it. Very busy, very busy social schedule. Uh, he's uh, He put me off till tomorrow. He's going to be doing some live streaming with his buddy Caleb. So tune in tomorrow, I think, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for Antonio from Antonio TV. But today, we are talking about our GOAT series. Bah! Bah! Is that a goat? <laughs> or is that a sheep? I don't know. Uh, but our GOAT series, uh, get offers accepted today. I know, I know, right? What a great acronym. Uh, we did a live stream about how to get your offers accepted now on Friday, which we changed after the fact to the GOAT series. Uh, we did financing options, waiving certain contingencies, uh, escalation clauses. And I thought the one missing link to that was appraisal gap coverage explained because I think a lot of agents are making some big boo-boos in representing their clients and saying, you know what? We are going to, yeah, we'll cover any amount of the appraisal gap. Not if you don't have the money. Uh, we can't do a wing and a prayer type of a strategy when we're working with our clients and talking about the home of their dreams. So I'm going to bring you over to the chalkboard. I said chalkboard. That's right. I meant the whiteboard. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Whoop. There it is. Whoop. There it is. Whoop. There I am. Whoop. There I am. Oh, there it is. All right. So appraisal gap coverage. A couple things that we want to talk about here. I'm going to talk about from the seller side and then we're going to talk about it from the buyer side. So seller side. We're going to call it AGC. Are you down with AGC? Yeah, you know me. Appraisal gap coverage. Um, AGC. Appraisal gap coverage. Okay. Now, what that means, we have list price. Well, we have offer price because list price doesn't matter anymore. Let's be honest. Uh, offer price. I'm just going to use offer. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it this way. List price, offer, and then appraisal, right? So let's say it's listed for 200K. This person is very excited. They've lost a couple offers in the past, and they're a bit salty. They're going to offer 310K. They're going to do the appraisal gap coverage. How much of this? Worst case scenario, right? They're offering 310. The list is 200. If it only appraises for 200K, worst case scenario, if I'm representing the seller, then there is a gap of $110,000. $110,000. Now, Unless you have $110,000 over here in a pile, you're independently wealthy for some reason, and you're not buying this home cash, you might have a problem. If you are doing financing, and let's say you're doing 310, right? You need, and you, you put in there that you have 20% down, 20% conventional. And we're not saying like, okay, maybe the bank will waive the waive the appraisal or maybe they'll do a desktop appraisal to be fine. You're protecting the seller. It is the worst case scenario. That's what you have to look at. 20% conventional, which means 20% of this, $62,000 plus the gap, 172,000. Okay, 110 plus that, that's 172,000 dollars that they have to have plus closing costs. Does that make sense? I hope so. 
if anybody's watching. But if you're watching on the playback, you can put it in the comments. It makes a lot of sense. Now, if they were doing this 20% down, maybe they could qualify instead for 5% down. So 5% of that 310 is 10% would be 31, 5% would be 16.5. Is that right? Yeah. So instead they do 5% down. Okay, does that make sense? They're changing the down payment from 20 to five. Worst case scenario, that's 16.5. They still need the 110K. But they have a surplus from the 62K that they were gonna put down. So 62 minus the 17.5, 20, that's 42, that's 45.5 roughly. Okay, that's 45.5. So now actually they need to show me another 55, 56.5, 66.5, 66.5 in order to reach that 110. So the total amount needed is only 110 plus the, the 16.5. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I did that quickly. Rewind it and play it again. Pretty much like Rain Man when it comes to numbers. We see 5% is the 16.5. They were going to put 20% down, which was 62. But now they only do 5, right? That's 16.5, which they should have another 45.5 from that 62 they were going to put down. You then take that 45, add it to this gap, they now only need 66.5, total of 100 and 110,000. If you're representing the seller, if you're representing the buyer, uh, it's the same thing, but you have to kind of think of it in a different way. Mm -mm. Appraisal gap coverage. Now explaining it to your client is a little bit different if you offer that 200 and they wanna go 310. Like worst case scenario, it doesn't appraise, guess what? You are actually paying the difference between what the bank feels it's worth, bank gives them 200K, so they're paying out of pocket 110,000 above and beyond what the bank feels that it's worth. You better be sure that you have a, uh, a conversation with your client explaining that, hey, this may not be the best strategy. May not be, unless you can, there's comps and you feel you could support it because we have to look out for our client's best interest. You have to do what's in the best interest of that buyer. The best interest isn't getting in the house no matter what. Okay, so you have to really, when it starts talking about appraisal gap coverage, they have to show it now. You have to strategize with them. Hey, if we go in here, do you have extra money to show it? Because if we don't, if you tell an agent, hey, we're willing to cover the gap, and the agent says, well, we're going to need proof of funds, you're going to say, why do you need proof of funds? I think it's going to appraise. I think it's not something that we can rely on in, in real estate and when we're looking out for somebody's best interests. So only do the appraisal gap coverage if you feel it's going to cover the spread or your client has enough assets to cover the spread. And if that's the case, sometimes if they put down a little bit more, uh, we have seen banks that are doing uh, desktop appraisals, or we had one, they did 25% down, uh, they just waived the appraisal altogether. The bank waived the appraisal. I wouldn't have uh, my the buyers that I'm working with waiving any appraisals uh, based on my recommendation, okay? All right, folks, coming back over here. Where are we at now? Where are we at? Ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo. Well, thank you. Welcome back. Uh, seeing as we have nobody watching, uh, you can watch this on the playback. And if you got any questions, holler at your boy. But we're going to chop this up, repurpose it, and add it to the YouTube channel. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero, J Man Speaks. Make it a great day, my friends. And. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in.